we are in a series called Trusting God, which basically takes a real, uh, I would say, a genuine look at the idea of faith. Um, sometimes, you know, we get in kind of a rut of I'm a Christian or whatever, and what does that really mean? What does it really mean to, to believe in God? And last week I mentioned the idea that there's a difference between believing God and believing in God, and we'll kind of keep looking at that again tonight. Um, I remember there was uh, there was a, a series of things that I had gone through. This really, for me, it was like the end of the world, right? Um, I know that other people have gone through serious things too. But when we're in those serious situations, we think that we're the only one who has ever gone through it. And um, so for me, it was one of those really, really, uh, really serious things. And I was really struggling in my faith. And, uh, you know, the idea of, Am I, am, I, am I still even a Christian? Like, do I want to keep pushing forward with this? You know, when you reach that place and you look at your Bible and you just think, why? You know, and you just kind of reach this dead place of, well, it just doesn't really seem like it matters. And um, I remember praying, and I remember I went to God and I said this, God, why have you allowed these things to happen? They've shaken my faith, and now I'm weaker in the faith, and I'm, and I'm spent. I'm drained out emotionally, mentally. I'm just kind of drained out. Don't, don't you care that I might fall away? And I remember this conversation with God so, so well because I remember him giving me the revelation that my faith was here, and he wanted it here. See, I thought that my faith was perfect and whole. See, you know, that's how we always work. We think that, you know, the problem's not with me. So in any given situation, I'm right and everything else is wrong. I am, you know, that kind of an idea. But when your faith is shaken, it shows you the weakness of your faith. And that allows God to speak to you and teach you things that you did not know and take you to a new level of faith. But it also gives you an opportunity for faith that you didn't have before. See, anybody anybody can trust in God when, I mean, there's no problem. I mean, that's, heck, that's easy. See, I, I believed in God because I was the perfect Christian. I did everything right. I dressed right. I talked right. I Perfect man, perfect image. I did all the things right. Checked off all the blocks. And uh, so I was, you know, I was ooh, really, I really had it going, you know. I didn't have to rely on God because I, I had it all under control, right? Well, so now you being an outsider, look inside the window and say, is that really, is that really being a Christian, not relying on God? not needing him to answer your prayers, but not being in a situation of brokenness. No, being a Christian is being whole. Being a Christian is being perfect. Being a Christian is being better than other people. See, I, I, did, I did everything right in the legalistic sense. But I didn't believe God. I believed in God. I, I knew that there's God out there, right? I even knew that, you know, the logical things that Jesus, yes, did die and was resurrected, the logical things. But I didn't believe God. I didn't believe that he was who he said he was. Maybe he doesn't really love me. Maybe he really, doesn't really care. Maybe he's not really there. Maybe he, I didn't believe that he was who he said he was. We can only choose to believe when there is reason to not believe. Doesn't that just make sense? We can only choose to believe when there is reason not to believe. It's a lot easier to believe <laughs> when everything's just going great, you know? And, uh, I mean, I've talked a lot about the different things that I've gone through. I don't want to make this a thing all about me, but think about your own life. Think about the different things that you've gone through and the different struggles you've gone through. And surely you can fill in the blanks without knowing all my story. There's oftentimes been reasons in your, even your own life to not believe God. Believing in God, yes, God is out there somewhere, but just maybe he isn't exactly who he said he was. Maybe he doesn't love as much as he says in the Bible, or maybe you know, he doesn't really care. Maybe he's not always there, that kind of stuff. So we're going to look at two ideas here. First off, real quick, believing God is trusting him today. 
we put a lot of a lot of stock in where I've been yesterday, what I did yesterday. Look at all I've accomplished, right? Well, I'm I uh, I did this great big thing in the ministry. Well, yeah, that was like ten years ago, though. I mean, in the meantime, you just kind of been fizzling out. Have you ever been in that place? Oh well, no, I'm that person who people can go to because I have all the answers in the Bible. Okay. Meanwhile, what have you done for the kingdom? So I mean, there's a, there's this kind of rut that we get into where we've done good things in the past and we think that now defines us so I am free from having to trust God today. Does that kind of make sense? Because of the things that I've done, I have I can now retire <laughs> from, from serving God, from, from doing what God's called me to do. And uh, not to say that people's positions can't change. You know, sometimes people aren't always pastors until they die. Sometimes people aren't always in a certain ministry until they die. Like that's not what I'm talking about. People's positions change. That's not not what I'm talking about. But instead of living off yesterday's faith or your mom's faith or your grandma's faith, today, wherever you are now, trust in God today. That's believing God. Believing God is not, and we looked at this last week, believing God is not doing nothing. Just sitting there, you know. But and this is what we're going to look at tonight. Believing God is also not getting our way. And that makes sense. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I know that. Like, duh, it's not getting our way. You don't have to say that. See, but that's one of those things that we say that we know, but when it actually comes down and the rubber re- meets the road, we actually don't know that. Let's look at Matthew 6, 9 through 13. And, and Jesus is is giving what's called uh, the Sermon on the Mount. It, it goes on for a couple chapters in Matthew. I think it's 5 through like 9 or something like that. But this is what it says here in 6, 9 through 13. It says, Therefore you should pray like this, Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, this this sounds fine. Like in our, We probably all memorize this at one point in our life. This sounds fine. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So let, let's look at this, though. What if God's kingdom coming means mine failing? What if it means my dreams, my hopes, my desires, my life failing? You might think, oh, God would never ask you to do that. Well, I, I seem to recall quite a few people dying <laughs> And giving up their lives for the sake of, you know, this Paul was one of them, died, was a martyr, was killed. Uh, a very smart young man named Stephen, the first recorded Christian uh, martyr uh, in the book of Acts. Uh, Peter, you know, one of the top three disciples. Yeah, he, him too. Uh, these people are, are people who, who gave up their life. And uh, for something that mattered, though. Um, it's not like we're asking you know you to skip game night over at the senior center for the sake of uh, playing video games with your grandson. I mean, <laughs> we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're talking about something a little bit bigger. W- what happens if? Uh, what if it means me becoming less, so he can have his way in my life? Well, now, what do I mean by less? Maybe, maybe becoming sick. Maybe being in constant pain. What if the only way? He can reach others or me is by my suffering. Think about that. What if the only way that he can reach others or me is by my suffering? Well, what do you mean by me? I'm a Christian. You don't know what tomorrow brings. And remember, you're not the best judge as to the place of your faith. I think that maybe God might be um, a little bit better at that. I mean, the Bible says that God disciplines those uh, disciplines those who He loves, and uh, Pastor was this morning in his sermon was uh, virtually talking about um, the way that discipline isn't the same as punishment. I'll even add to that: discipline isn't always because you did something wrong. Sometimes it's just to work character in us that isn't there. Sometimes it is to teach us something that we wouldn't have known. Sometimes it's because Somebody else did something, and God just wants you to grow and mature from it. See, God disciplining us doesn't mean that necessarily that, you know, you got in a fight with somebody and you won't forgive them. It, it goes beyond that. God is always disciplining us. He's always teaching us. He's always encouraging us and ushering us forward. So is it still his will done when it means mine undone? Well, now let's look at that prayer that we just read through in Matthew 6 and and kind of take some of those things apart. So what if it's 
You're not in your name be honored as holy. Okay, that's fine. What if it's your name be honored as holy even as my neighbors are cursing me, even as everybody spreads lies about me? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What if that means me having to change what I'm doing? I'll never forgive them. I'll never do that. Well, is it God's kingdom or my kingdom? Give us today our daily bread. What if that means that I don't have enough for tomorrow and I have to trust him today? There's a story which I hate about this guy that started an orphanage And he cared for all these kids. And, and they didn't have enough food for the kids. So every morning they would pray. And every day God would send somebody by with food. That's hard. What if learning to trust in God means that we are put through very uncomfortable things? Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors, but God, I've changed, and I'm not doing that crap anymore. What, mean, what if that still means that people are still over and over again every single day doing the same thing to you, spreading the lies on the gossip, saying snide things every day, where the whole community thinks that you did something that you didn't do? Have you ever had an entire city that you live in turn against you? I have. Have you ever heard everybody, even people that you don't even know, thinking that you did something, and, and as they walk by you, muttering under their breath about that thing that you did that you didn't actually do? I have. What if praying this prayer is the exact opposite of praying, God bless me? Because what if God's kingdom coming is only through ours uncoming? And through our curses, God's name glorified. That is hard. So trusting God is not getting our own way. It's not everything going perfectly fine. It's not that. Believing God isn't so that I will have the things that I pray for, and if God doesn't answer me, I'm going to throw a fit. See, because it's not my will done. Trusting God is not getting our way. So, <clears throat> I remember there was a time that I was praying. And, uh, see, it's, this would be funny for the older people who uh, have been Christians for a long time. It's not so funny to me yet, though. Uh, <laughs> I, I was praying, and I remember thinking, God, I'm just so worn and prideful. I'm spent. I'm, I'm, I'm not spent. I'm, I'm like, you know, um, well, yeah, why not? I'm used up. I'm, 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 I'm a shell of a man. I, I'm just worn out. You know, mentally, emotionally, physically, I'm just, I'll never be anything greater. I've peaked. You know what I mean? In my success, in my worldly success, I've peaked. It's just not, I'm not going to be able to have a second wind. And, and I'm too prideful. So yeah, even if there was a way for me to change, I, I wouldn't want to because I just, I don't, I don't want to change. Ever been in that place? All the older people are like, yeah, every day. So then I said, you know, God, you know, if, if you can do anything for it, you go right ahead. And this is the part where all the older people go, <laughs> foolish mortal. Yes, it happened exactly as you thought. So God caused sickness and a series of other things. And I was scared. And I still am scared. I really am not looking forward to the future medical procedures that I will have to get done. I really am not looking forward to that. Um, so definitely scared. But changed. See, my faith was at a... And God just caught, brought a couple of problems by and all that. Got over the hump. Look at that. See how God does that? It's a lot different than I heard all growing up and with the name it and claim it stuff and all that. It's, it's a lot different than all of that. But I will say this. 
here we are. See, before I was at the point where I was going to leave the church and ministry. Now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to leave church. That's stupid. But I understand that there might come in time when my position might change. I probably won't be an associate pastor until I die. I mean, I'm only 30. <laughs> I probably won't be an associate pastor for the rest of my life. Um, so my position will probably change, but I won't leave ministry. Even if I'm no longer serving in a church, I won't leave ministry. See the difference in my mindset? My mindset before was this. I want to go somewhere safe. I want to leave everything and just withdraw from the world and not get hurt anymore and be somewhere closed off and safe. Florida's fine. <laughs> An island's fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but now my mindset is different. Now it's no matter where I am, I'll be in ministry. See? That change in here that can only happen when God does something. There's a song that 10th Avenue North sings that says, Don't stop the madness. Don't stop the chaos. Don't stop the pain. Just bring, do whatever it takes to bring me down to my knees. <laughs> and yet it's true. <laughs> And yet it's true because we, by our nature, try to find the most safe route for ourselves. It's the most uh, secure place that we can find. We're, we're basically, we're, we're, we're like a turtle just trying to go back into our shell. And, uh, you know, that's a safe place to be. And uh, it doesn't always work like that. And uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's easy to pray a prayer, but it's hard to mean when it's all you have. When all you have is the words coming out of your mouth, it's a lot harder to mean. When you're young and you have the strength of your youth, when you have endless dreams and hopes, that's different. But as you start to age and you start to realize you don't have as much to offer as you thought you did, your, fail, your health starts failing you and your outlook kind of diminishes, it's a lot harder to raise up a mighty prayer of faith. And it's a lot harder then. It's a lot harder to stand, to stand in faith for God to do something when... You have nothing to offer, nothing to bribe him with. No, no manipulation scheme. You can't say, God, I did this. So you, you, you look at yourself and you say, wow, look at all the times that God's had, God has had mercy and grace on me. And the only thing that I have is to, is to bring more requests. And I don't even have anything to offer. Like, hey, if you do this for me, I'll do this. I have nothing. To, and it's that complete barren openness, that, that, that heart crushing being, what's it called, where, where you're just displayed openly before God and he can see your innermost being. That's, that's a place that's different. It's easy to pray a prayer. It's hard to mean it when it's all you have. Most of the times, though, that you, you're going to have anger in your life with these different things. <laughs> it's going to be an easy, natural reaction. And the reason for it is because, now, say this with me, you are mad because you aren't getting your way. Okay, so let's just let's roll that over again. You're angry because you're not getting you're not getting it, guys. You're not getting your way. Okay, remember that the next time they get real mad at, at God, you're mad at God because you're not getting your way. It's it's that simple. You know, um, my kids fight a lot. I think that maybe they fight more than anybody ever did in their whole life, and uh, maybe maybe they are all Cain and Abel, just like reincarnated. I don't know. But uh, whatever it is, uh, <laughs> see, there they go, crying about something else. I'm just kidding, guys. Just kidding, just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> but they get mad and they fight because they aren't getting their way. We do the exact same thing. We, we get mad because we aren't getting our way. We pray for God to answer. We pray for God to resolve all of our issues, to heal us. And if he doesn't, we think he just doesn't care. If God's not going to do what I tell him to do, it just obviously means he doesn't care. And uh, so that's the end of that. And it's like, well, that's not, <laughs> that's, that's, this is not true. We get mad if we can't micromanage God and get our way. God, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. This is when you need to do it. And this is what all those other people need to change. I have a list. And this person here, and actually that person, probably that person too, they can't change. You should probably just go ahead and take them out of the picture. You can do it however you want. And death in their sleep, uh, car wreck, I don't care. Just they need to be out of the picture because they're, they're a waste of space. And so now, see, you see how we do that with God? We go to God with these prayers of what he needs to do. We micromanage him and say, this is the, you got to do it like this, God. This is, this is the way I figured it all out. 
we think that all these sufferings are just irritations, but the, the truth is that, that our suffering is pu- it's not pushing us away from God, it's pushing us to true faith. The troubles that you have right now are pushing you to, to, to true faith. You can choose today to believe God, that he is who he says he is, and that his grace is sufficient. Or you can choose to complain. You can choose that this is too much. You can choose that God doesn't love you, that you are the exception to the rule, that, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, he was thinking about everybody except for you. You know, you, you can choose to believe that if you want to, but that's not what God said. And when we choose to believe those subtle little lies, God doesn't really love me, basically we're t- calling God a liar. I mean, that's basically what we're doing. If God said, hey, I care. Every single tear that you shed is not in vain. And we say, no, God doesn't care about what I've been through. Isn't that calling him a liar? I mean, I could could be mistaken. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. We think our suffering is pushing us away from God. It's 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 that thing that's gonna gonna finally straw that's gonna break the camel's back. But it's pushing us to true faith. It's giving us opportunity. It is opening a door that was closed to us before. And God is gonna use that door to bring about things that we never thought possible. So how does all this apply to apply to you? Well, I'm glad you asked. God shaking us gives us a stronger grip on God's unshakability. Sometimes God has to shake us for us to see that he doesn't shake. Sometimes God has to just kind of do things that we don't like <laughs> in order to bring something that's more lasting. There's a there's a song by a band called Thrice, and it's called, um, I think it's just called A Branch on the River. I, I don't know. I don't think they got real creative with that name. But uh, the, the the chorus goes, or the verse, I don't know which. It says, holding on to a branch in the river, scared of letting go. That's kind of what we do. We're, we're holding on, not knowing that it's just a branch. It's, it's being moved down the river, and we're still going down the river. We can hold that branch all we want, but it's not really changing anything. We think if we let go, God will make something really bad happen. I can't trust. I can't, I can't pray for God to help me to grow. I can't, I can't just let it go. I can't, I have to worry about my kids. I have to worry about what God's going to do. I have to worry about my job. I have to worry about my health. I, I have to worry if I, if I let go, if I just, if I just trust God, something bad's going to happen. But here's the thing. Bad things are going to happen anyways. Holding on doesn't make us safer. It makes us scareder. Holding on doesn't doesn't make us safer. If you're in a river and it's rushing down, you're in the you know the rapids and all that stuff, and you're holding on to a branch, it's not going to do anything. It's it's just a branch. It's not it's not going to do anything. It, it it doesn't keep us any safer. So you might as well just surrender to God. You might as well just trust in God. It's not going to happen the way you want, but. Uh, Holding on isn't going to do anything anyways. Come to God so as to listen, not to speak and get your way. You will find yourself in a rut eventually in the course of your life, in your prayer life especially, where you go to God and you're praying for something, and it's just kind of the same thing every single day. You know, um, Maybe you're asking for, for God to heal you, and, and he just continues to ignore you, and you're just getting really frustrated. Uh, maybe it's... Um, uh, there's a certain th- situation that's bugging you. Maybe somebody that did you wrong or something, and you're just continually praying over this every single day, and you don't really feel like you're learning anything. You don't really feel like God's answering. You just kind of feel like you're in a rut. And uh, it's in those places that you truly me- learn what this means, to come to God so as to listen and not to speak and get your way. It it uh, It's one of those things where you have to let your prayers change. Well, I've been praying like that for years, and that's probably the problem. See, back 15 years ago, it was okay for you to vent to God and say about how this person did this and this, that. And you probably still felt God moving and all those different things. It was fine back then. Well, it's 15 years later. God doesn't like us to just sit there playing the same record over and over again. Okay, we've covered this already. I'm trying to help you to grow, but you can't just keep repeating and resurfacing the past. But we love bringing up the past. Ask married people. They love doing this. So my spouse, he's like, okay, all, all right. You know, it's, there's, maybe you should let that go. That happened like a week ago. Just move on. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there just comes a point when God is expecting you to change and grow. 
and God is trying to bring you to new heights. And you can't go to new heights when you keep jumping back into the mud pit. Like you just, you just can't. Um, if God's trying to turn you into an eagle and you're trying to be a pig, <laughs> not really going to get anywhere. Pigs are kind of slow walkers. They have those little stubby legs. <laughs> So come to God to listen instead and let him change you. I mean, who knows? Maybe you're wrong. The way is uncomfortable. And I don't know how to tell, the, tell you this, but you can't do it. It's just too hard. But, but trust God through the process of what he can do. See, because if you're always trying to find your strength and what you can do and the comfortable way and, what, and all this different stuff, it's, it's going to be real hard to trust in God. Because your whole life purpose is trying to find a way that's comfortable for you. That's If your purpose in life is to find comfort, you can't be seeking after God. If your purpose in life is to find the things that you can do, get used to not seeing God do really amazing things in your life. Because your whole course, core of being is focused on the things that you can do. I have lived long enough to know that there's a very small, very small amount of things that I can do. Very small. Um, but the good news is that God doesn't have that same smallness. Lord, I, I, I thank you for what you're doing in us and through us, that you're bringing us through situations that are, first off, you're staying with us through them. But second off, you're bringing us through things that are helping us to grow. And we're moving past just simply believing in God. And we're coming to a place of hearing who you are and believing that. And choosing to live by faith rather than by fear. And uh, God, we just thank you for everything you're doing. We know that you are on the move. We know that you're working. Uh, if I could have uh, Damien and um, Victoria and uh, Norval, if you guys could come up front. If there's anybody who, who needs prayer, and maybe you're really going through a hard time, God does care. And uh, he actually tells us to present a request to God, and uh, you'll find that God meets you the clearest when your thinking and your worn out is just beyond frazzled. God has a way of meeting you in places that he couldn't in your strength. So if, if you need prayer, don't don't hesitate to, to uh, uh, come and ask for prayer from these. That's, that's what they're here for. So, uh, Lord, we just... We just thank you. I pray that you would bless those who came and help them to grow. We love you, Lord.